So this is one of the most unusual places we've ever been to. We are visiting Monta Farm, which is an old military fortress, and we have loved exploring this place and learning about the interesting history here, and we're so excited to show you guys. So if you're a fan of drone shots, history, and cool and interesting places, this is definitely the video for you. Hey there, I'm Sarah and this is Marek. For the past few years, we've been saving up to go traveling and it's finally happening. We're traveling full time, but there's a catch. We have a budget. So the better we budget, the longer we get to travel. While you hit that subscribe button, let's tell you more about this very special place. In the year 1692, the Duke of Savoy's army crossed the Alpine border of France in Col de Vos and wreaked havoc for roughly 77 kilometers, all the way down to a little town called Gap. And after this invasion, King Louis XIV ordered his chief military engineer, Vauban, to urgently review fortifications along the Alpine border. Vauban went on to build the magnificent military fortress of Montafon from the ground up. Please appreciate the first of many drone shots as we walk to our first spot. <laughs> So we're about 100 meters away it's from the entrance to the main Montafa fortress and this building behind us right here is acting as the first line of defense for the fortress as a whole. So the reason for this building being built so far away from the fortress is that it's the only point of this entire plateau that doesn't have any natural defense such as the sheer cliffs that surrounding this entire fortress. Something that's pretty interesting to note as well is that this building is connected by underground tunnels all the way to the main fortress. And something that we just want you guys to think about moving forward with this whole tour is that this, these places are all built 300 years ago and they didn't have any form of power tools back then. So just like the craftsmanship and the precision to, to see all of this is just ridiculous and it's something cool to think about just walking around this entire place. So there are only two ways to get into Montafin, and this entrance behind me here is the bigger out of the two entrances, but it's also on the same side that we were talking about earlier that doesn't have any natural defenses. So on this side of the fortress they had to make more efforts with their defense structures and make sure that it was secure. So we've just made it through the main entrance at the Montafar Fortress and the first thing you see and most often hear is this clock behind us right here. So this is the village clock. It was originally built in 1821 and was intended to be built with the church but for some reason it wasn't and it was built here instead. So something that's interesting about this clock is that it still rings every hour on the hour and also at the half past on the hour as well. So for example if it's 12 o'clock it will ring 12 times. And sometimes, just for fun, they might double this process and they might ring 24 times in the space of two minutes. And the reason we know this is because if we shuffle just a little bit this way, this is actually where we've been staying for the past week. But don't get 
a fright just yet. We haven't changed our locations. This is actually an accommodation that's also run by our host. So we've come down here just to come and help and clean up a bit. Now this place is really, really interesting and we've got quite a cool story about this place. So we will save it for another short Tuesday video. So you can expect to see something about it very, very soon. And it just so happens that today of all days when we're recording, the clock isn't working, but this is generally what it sounds like. Vauban wanted to make Montafont a citadel where civilians could live amongst the soldiers in order to avoid the soldiers deserting due to the very harsh living conditions. Today, Montafont is a real village, home to 170 residents with its streets and buildings, but the town planning is clearly military. Vauban chose to build Montafon on a rocky outcrop at 1,050 meter altitude, which is 140 meters higher than the surrounding area. And Vauban strategically chose this place because it overlooks a crossroads, which is very ideal for spotting the enemy coming from the surrounding areas. Although Montafon is no longer a military fortress, the army still comes sometimes, but still for holidays, and we think it's a pretty darn cool place to live. So this may look like a random mound of earth behind us, but that's because it's got a very tactical reason. So this is actually the gunpowder room, and it is one of the oldest buildings in the Montafa fortress. It was built between 1693 and 1695 and can hold up to 50 tons of gunpowder. So this is actually the second form that this gunpowder room has taken. It was originally built as just a normal building, really, with very thick walls and an insulated ceiling to protect it if ever there had to be an explosion. So then in the 19th century it was then covered with this earth to further conceal it and protect it from enemies as well as giving extra protection if there ever would be an explosion. So something that's very interesting about this gunpowder room as well is that it's fed by an underground water supply so that if ever the site was taken and overtaken by an enemy they could then flood the gunpowder room rendering the gunpowder useless. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, there aren't really many war stories to tell about Montafon. And that is because in 1713, the Alpine border was actually moved east and that resulted in Montafon being deprived of its strategic position, which pretty much meant that it never really reached its full potential or the full size that Vauban had planned for it. But I'm pretty sure the civilians and the soldiers living here didn't really mind seeing not much wartime. But with that being said, Muntafa actually did experience two partial war periods. 
The first being in 1815 when Austrian troops returning home after defeating Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo besieged both Montafa and Briançon. And the second part being in 1940 when an Italian warplane actually came and bombed the west wing of this building that we're sitting in front of right now, the arsenal. And that is where most of the weapons for Montafa were actually kept. In 2008, Montafon, along with 11 other of Vauban's works, were registered as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And that's pretty darn impressive, because worldwide there are 1,121 UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and Vauban is responsible for 12 of those. So he's very famous all throughout France, and his architecture and amazing work is appreciated still to this day. Something that we found really awesome is that we've been able to give ourselves a tour because the tours here are currently not running because of COVID. So with these signboards that are put up all throughout Montafon, they give interesting information about the buildings and just a bit more of the history here, which has been really nice for us. So we've just arrived at the barracks and now I'm going to hop over to the next spot. So these are the barracks. So this is where the soldiers slept and this building is pretty impressive because it's five buildings with five levels and 56 rooms and the length of the building is 200 meters long. It even had a bakery in the western section. so much for watching this video and coming along on our tour of Montefon with us. We did not even cover half of the things there are to see and do here. If we had, this video would probably be about like two hours long. So we thought we'd just give you guys a little bit of a taste and show you how amazing this place really is. Unfortunately, some of the things that they usually have on offer are not available at the moment because of COVID. So usually they'd have like tours going through the tunnels and the underground places in here, which would be really cool. But for those of you who are interested in finding out a bit more information about Montefon, we'll put a couple of links down in the description below. So we are so lucky to have been able to come and spend time here and just learn more about the history of Montefa. We honestly never thought that we'd ever find ourselves in a place like this or that even places like this even still existed. So it's that time of the video. So if you enjoyed this video and, learn, and enjoyed learning about the history of Montafa, please don't forget to smash that like button. Let's set a bit of a goal and try to get this video to 50 likes. And if you enjoyed and found something super interesting, comment down below what you found most favorite about this video and let us know if you would ever want to come and visit Montafa. And of course, subscribe to our channel. We'd absolutely love it if you joined us for our future adventures moving forward. And we'll see, see you guys, guys back this, this coming, coming Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> that was so cheesy, <laughs> I love it. And now I'm going to hop over to the next spot.
Run, Bobby, run. So these are the barracks. This building is pretty darn impressive because <laughs> I'm out of breath, Bombi, from running. 